I've heard of the, this whole social media thing and, and how they're reaching out. And what I'd like to say is that, you know, you know, I, I went to that mosque that this guy went to. And, you know, you look at me, okay, I, I'm, I'm just a regular person. Um, you know, I love this country. <laughs> I love Alex Jones. I love the Alex Jones show. I've been a fan for years. And I'd like the American public and people that are watching this, you know, to, 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 to look carefully. And when you see Muslims on the street in your town, in your city, um, you know, please think twice. You know, these are regular people just living a regular nine to five job, just re living a regular life. That doesn't mean you saw a documentary, the person on the street or that child on the street is going to go do something. OK, we're just normal people. And just, you know, just be educated and, and think twice before saying something or doing something rash, because that's not what America was built on. America was built on the values and freedom and, and, and the right to bear arms, the right to freedom of religion. I mean, this is a great country. This is the greatest country in the history of mankind. In what country can you go and, and uh, a peasant from another country or a person that has nothing come here and become a brain surgeon? Mm -hmm. you know? So I'd, I'd like to just, uh, from the bottom of my heart, you know, just say, look, you know, we're sorry for what, what happened here and we pray for the victims. Please do not um, generalize us or stereotype us, especially, you know, I'm worried about the youth. I'm worried about uh, the young Muslims that are growing up you know, in this country and, and the kind of hatred that they're, they're, they're going to be receiving now. Mm -hmm. Well, what, you know, also, too, with with that, um, just very quickly, guys, sorry, I'm going over here. But just with that, we have, um, you know, people saying that it was a Christmas party that offended them or perhaps they were making fun of his beard. Um, things that, that are these triggers that if you are living here in America, this is, you're going to just, it's the freedom of speech. Things are going to happen that are going to upset yeah. you, but it's, we're kind of seeing this turn now where you're not even allowed to say anything that is going to offend somebody, almost justifying the fact that these people went out and massacred a Christmas party because they were upset by something that the guy posted on Facebook. Yeah, I, I did hear about that. I did hear, you know, he got an argument with, with somebody at the party uh, over religion. Uh, one of the reporters at the news conference personally told me that the argument happened two weeks prior. So I don't know if you guys knew that, but that's one mm -hmm. of the re reporters there told me. But but yeah, uh, like Alex Jones likes to say, you know, we're, we're living in a, a very politically correct environment. Uh, a lot of the word games that are being played. But, you know, one of the things, you know, I believe in obviously is freedom of speech. So, yeah, I mean, he if, if someone said that to him, he should not take that. This guy, Farouk, this crazy mentally ill person should not take that as a reason to go and massacre innocent people. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's wrong. And, and you know, if you, you have an opinion and you have something to say, you know, you know, say it. You know, that, that, that's what I say. This is a freedom of speech. This is one of the rights given to all of us in this country. And um, yeah, I mean, that 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 you shouldn't have took, took, took it that extreme. Right. Obviously. Well, absolutely. Mentally Ill, head, mental head case. <laughs> and so I know, you know, just the last my last question that I wanted to say, obviously, we do have um, NPR is saying some Muslim Americans are irritated by Obama's call for them to root out extremism. Obviously, yes, you know, everyone can't be the police there of their community and this and that. But how can your community there see instances like this? Because uh, the, the gentleman that we interviewed said that he had no idea that this guy had these radical views. Um, so how are you all able to maybe spot radicalization or what could you even do to answer Obama's call? Correct. Yeah, this, this is an issue um, in the wide sense in, in the Muslim community in the United States. And I believe this is something that's going to be addressed uh, soon. And, and yeah, you know, definitely I, I believe that something, uh, a system should be uh, created within the Muslim community that, you know, we are basically policing ourselves. So, you know, me, I can spot, you know, this type of person or, or give me a profile and say, OK, if, per, if a person is is, you know, being extreme or He's, he's making crazy comments. Maybe we should go and approach him as Muslims, uh, modern Muslims, and talk to him and see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there should be some type of vetting process to prevent the, these type of, of crazy, innocent, you know, massacres. Uh, so, yeah, this is definitely an issue within the Muslim community. And if we can partner with, um, with groups that can, that can help and, and, and create some type of peaceful uh, system where we can actually police ourselves and, you know, prevent these things from happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm all for it. Uh, right. So, you know, to, to prevent innocent people from dying from massacres, to find out, you know, if somebody's going to do something like this, you know, number one, stop them. 
you know, me personally, I would have MMA the guy. Um, <laughs> and number three, you know, uh, obviously you want to report the proper authorities if the guy's walking outside um, looking angry, you know, with an AK-47 or something, you know, obviously. But, um, you know, definitely there should be some type of system. And this is, uh, this is a larger issue within the Muslim community that something like this, there should be a system or process within the Muslim community in America to vet these, these type of uh, uh, flag and vet these type of things before they happen. Absolutely. All right. Well, Hamid Adli, thank you so much for your time. And we'll be talking with you again. Well, and of course, after every crisis, we can't let it go to waste. So they have been doubling down on calls for gun control. Uh, but now Huffington Post is actually taking it to the next level. They're calling for the government to outright seize all firearms. Joining me now is Jakari Jackson. Jakari, this is just insane that they continue to just up the ante. It's not going to happen. Since Obama became president, over 100 million guns have been sold in the U.S. It's yeah, not going to happen. Because every time we have a mass shooting, people go out and buy firearms. It's not because they're planning mass shootings. It's because they understand that people are trying to take away their firearms, whether it be a magazine restrictions or things for the supposed assault rifle, most of which are not assault rifles. But I want to talk about this article from Steve Watson that came out last week when he addressed the 355 supposed mass shootings that happened in, in the United States of America. Now, this is a stat that's been repeated over and over again within the media, mm -hmm. but nobody took the time to fact check and actually see where this thing came from. The number actually came from Reddit. It is a group of activists on there who just said there are 355 mass shootings, even though if you go check the FBI's own numbers, it's not 355, it's 21. Right, because what constitutes a mass shooting? And they just say anything. Yeah, so they just pretty much, pretty much make up their own statistics. <laughs> and there's another thing we found on Reddit, uh, one of our guys showed it to me earlier today, when they were comparing and contrasting alcohol laws to those of gun laws. And they just had a few things that they were making reference to. They said if alcohol was regulated the same way as firearms do, I just have a few things here. They said banning every alcoholic drink over 35 proof, that would be something that you would have to do to make the laws fair, banning mixed drinks that contain two or more alcoholic ingredients, that'd be like an assault weapons ban. And of course, uh, the gun show loopholes they always refer to, they say you have to go to someplace like a 7-Eleven or a liquor store to have the clerk verify your identification before you even handed your friend a gl glass of wine or a beer right. at a football game or something like that. Wow. So it, it just goes <laughs> all the way through it. But I have a few statistics here that are actual statistics from the FBI and the CDC talking about various things. And one of them is the Uniform Crime Report from 2014. Firearm deaths have not only gone down every year, they've gone down in pretty much every category, including those of rifles. Now, I want everybody to understand when they calculate rifles, that includes bolt action rifles, semi-automatic rifles, fully automatic rifles. Mm -hmm. And I know those things are very uh, glamorized on TV. You, you hear the most about somebody getting shot with a AK-47 or AR-15, as opposed to somebody getting shot with a pistol or you know a pump action shotgun. But you can see from FBI's own numbers that it, they are down. Right. And of course, blunt objects like hammers and baseball bats, they still kill more people than AK-47. And still. if you take away people's guns, if they want to actually commit a crime, they're going to stab you. They're going to build pipe bombs. Yes. Uh, they're already saying ISIS is using scientists to figure out how to produce chemical weapons that they can use on Europeans. Mm -hmm. So they're going to find a way if you're a bad person. You don't want to talk about, uh, you know, these suicide pills and things like that, how they're affecting the youth. And they don't want to talk about putting armed guards in schools, mm -hmm. but they don't don't worry about it because they they're making bulletproof blankets now, so you can yeah can I, I heard gear. about that. And That's to, what they're gonna do. And to wrap this thing completely up, talking about the compare and contrast between the alcohol deaths and also the firearm deaths, the CDC has listed in 2013 there were over 10,000 people killed by drunk drivers. Now that's mm -hmm. probably not property damage. That's not people who were hurt or injured in some other way. But that's 10,000 people killed by drunk drivers. But when you look at the firearm statistics, it's 8,000 people killed by total firearms. Right. More people are killed and by a lot drunk of those drivers. Are suicides. Yeah, and more people are killed by drunk drivers than are killed by firearms. And people right. always want to jump up, let's ban this, let's ban that while they're drinking a glass of wine and having a beer. Exactly. And I'm not saying we should ban alcohol, but you should have that same type of mentality like, okay, it's horrible that all these people died in these alcohol related tragedies, but I didn't do that. It's the same thing with the firearm. It's, it's, it's not something I did or any law abiding citizen did right. these tragedies. Well, Jakari Jackson, thank you so much for bringing some facts into this debate. I know that there's a lot of people that really do not appreciate that. It goes against their agenda. We certainly appreciate you being in here. All right, well, thank you. That's it for the show tonight. We'll see you here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients,
that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. Infowarslife.com. That's Infowarslife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the Infowars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at Infowarsnews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.